England may have gone down to a narrow defeat in their opening clash in Paris, but Stuart Lancaster refused to press the panic button and named an unchanged starting 15 for this Calcutta Cup encounter at Murrayfield. Johnny May played despite suffering a broken nose against France. The men in white seeking a fourth successive RBS Six Nations win against their northern neighbours. Scotland's last championship success came in 1999 and defeat in this game would mean that that barren run was likely to continue. The pyrotechnics pre-match were impressive but would the men wearing the Scottish jerseys be able to produce similar fireworks on the pitch? Interim coach Scott Johnson made three changes for this game. Flanker Chris Fusaro came in for his debut in place of captain Kelly Brown. Tommy Seymour replaced the injured Sean Maitland. Matt Scott started at inside centre with Duncan Taylor dropping to the bench. Greg Laidlaw captained the side. England were on top early on and after Owen Farrell had missed an easy penalty having slipped on the greasy underfoot conditions, Danny Kerr eventually broke the deadlock with a clever drop goal from 35 metres in the fifth minute. This was the second match in a row where Kerr had scored with a drop having also clipped one over against France in Paris. After Laidlaw had missed with a penalty chance for Scotland, England really turned the screw with a fine try from Northampton Saints centre Luther Burrell. As the English pack came up short of the Scottish line, Kerr got a quick pass away to Burrell, whose pace and long reach got him over for his second try in as many matches. Farrell slotted the conversion over, and the visitors had a 10 points to nil lead with only 15 minutes gone. It may be 15 years since Scotland won this championship, and that before the Six Nations even came into being, and any hopes they may have had of breaking that duck seemed to be drifting ever further away when England stretched their lead to 13-0 in the 28th minute. Incessant English pressure forcing a penalty when James Hamilton was penalised for going in off his feet. No advantage accrued, and Farrell put the penalty over to leave England in a healthy 13-point lead. As the first half drew to a close, England had one more attack. Farrell broke the defensive line and found the pacey Burrell, who almost got away for his second try of the night, only to be held up just short of the line. And as the English players piled in, a combination of stout Scottish defence and the post denied the men in white another score. So at half-time, England led 13-0, Stuart Lancaster's men firmly in control. Early in the second half, tempers frayed somewhat, with both number sixes, Ryan Wilson and Tom Wood, facing up to each other. A few other players wanted to get involved in what was really only schoolyard pushing and shoving, but it was a demonstration of the tension at pitch level. The referee, Jerome Garces, handled the situation very sensibly. Keep your self-control after my whistle. OK? Are you fine? Perfect. Perfect. Play on. Johnny May's speed was proving to be quite a thorn in the side of the Scottish defence. And when Alex Dunbar refused to release him after making the tackle, the patience of the referee from France ran out and the first yellow card of the match was produced for the Scottish centre. Not really. No. The Scots may have been trailing on the scoreboard and numerically on the pitch, but their supporters gave the team great encouragement and refused to stop singing. However, in the 58th minute, England took advantage of that extra man and put clear ground between themselves and the Scots. Any slim hopes the home side may have harboured of a comeback were well and truly dashed when Jack Noel found his fullback Mike Brown. And like Burrell before him, Brown crossed the line for a try, his second in as many internationals and a performance that would earn him RBS Man of the Match. When Farrell converted, it was 20-0 and England could start thinking of their next game against Ireland at Twickenham. This one fizzled out as a contest. Substitutions broke the flow of the game and with underfoot conditions worsening, it made it difficult for the players. 
Scotland couldn't really get anything going. And as the game drifted towards full time, it was England who could celebrate a fourth successive Six Nations win over the Scots and a first win in this season's campaign. Scotland held scoreless in this fixture for the first time since 1978, are possibly more concerned about avoiding the wooden spoon now than winning the championship. They take on Italy and Rome next. But as the stadium emptied in Edinburgh, Chris Robshaw lifted the Calcutta Cup once again. For him and his England colleagues, there's other silverware on their minds, no doubt. Final score at Murrayfield, Scotland nil, England 20.